Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and welcome to this video series about facing the toughest challenges of teaching primary maths post lockdown in the 2021-22 academic year. This video is all about teaching year two in England or its equivalent to P3 in Scotland or it's age six to seven and the third formal year of education if you're not in England or Scotland. I'm going to refer to it as year two in this video. Year two is the year group that has been most seriously affected by lockdown. There are some extreme challenges which need to be faced head on. In many schools, some of the children coming into year two cannot securely count out 10 objects. That's because that's a skill that should have been secured at the end of reception class, but their reception class was really seriously disrupted. And then the year one teachers have been facing extreme challenges in dealing with everything they've had to deal with and haven't been able to properly address those issues. And I've come across schools where there could be up to maybe 10 children coming into a year two class who cannot yet do that. Now that's unprecedented. So we need strategies that assume that you will have children who could be struggling in this way and that if you have them, you identify them quickly and deal with that quickly at the start of the year because if you don't identify it and deal with it, you're setting yourself and those children up with huge problems for the future. So in this video, I'm going to suggest that you start each day with some targeted numeracy activities, which really play to the needs of each child. And then in your main maths teaching, you teach maths in ways that work with all children, even if they've got substantial gaps in their learning. So I'll explain both those things, then I'll talk a little bit about the apparatus you're going to need in your classroom this year so that if there is any budget floating around, you can grab it with both hands and spend it wisely. And finally, I'll talk a little bit about preparing for year two SATs exams, which are only in England. So those of you who aren't based in England and don't have to deal with SATs can switch off this video with a sigh of relief at that point. So first of all, I'm going to suggest that you imagine your classroom with children coming in every morning to worksheets on their desks which are targeted at them. Now this doesn't just have to be about maths. If you need to do specific literacy interventions or other interventions as well, you can combine these activities. But I'm talking about a pre-planned 10 to 15 minutes where you've thought out in advance exactly what every child is doing. And as they come into the classroom, they should be able to get on with it, leaving you free to observe how they're getting on with it and to help out specific individuals you want to work with. So in numeracy, that might be as simple as digit formation. If your children cannot yet reliably write digits correctly, that needs to be sorted now because they're going to be writing loads of digits this year and if they're consistently getting wrong, it's going to be a problem. I recommend the Communication for All number formation rhyme cards. They're free to download and they're really helpful for that skill. This worksheet could be useful to you. This is one of my worksheets. It's about calculations within 10 and children can do these with their fingers. And of course, you can also check they're writing the answers correctly. There's links at the bottom of all my worksheets where you can click through to a site where there's a version of this worksheet which will auto generate more examples of the same worksheet, just with different numbers, but the same standard of work and the same types of questions. All of this is free and you can find the links to all these worksheets at www.authenticmaths.co.uk forward slash worksheets. Beyond that, there's a similar worksheet for calculations within 20. And by this stage, they might be working with their fingers and toes, imagining the toes as the tens. But they might also be working with a rec and rec, or they might be working with tens frames. Each of these representations give the same structure, where a seven would be a five and a two. You can also show this as a teacher with the coat hanger, or you might use a 20 bead string that's bridged into fives. It doesn't really matter which representation you use, so long as your children are trained to use it and they are using it confidently and consistently. There should be something there that's supporting their thinking about questions like these and making these questions accessible. And is also teaching them to see the structure of number at the same time. I also recommend these propeller boards, which come in packs. 
this is the year one board and these are lovely you just pick a number of the day here between one and ten and you get all your children to write that in the cloud and write it correctly so their digit formation is correct then they have to copy the same number into every cloud on the sheet and complete the sheet for that number and they really love these because it's all write on wipe off materials if they make mistakes they can easily correct them you can differentiate this by putting the children into groups so they can help each other and then there's also a propeller board for year two ideas for later on in the year i also have some more worksheets that you might find really useful this one is on visual two digit edition that one's without exchanging there is one with exchanging and children simply have to count up the total number of squares and puzzle that out and then there's worksheets on visual two digit subtraction with and without exchanging and i've also got these essential worksheets on fast addition and subtraction i wouldn't expect to see these in before christmas probably not before february half term at the earliest so i'm suggesting you need a start of the morning heavily differentiated and targeted morning mental math session that's going to really help each of your children make progress and of course it doesn't just have to be mental maths it can be other topics too then for your main teaching you're going to have to teach in ways that grab the whole class even if some of your children are really struggling with their basic numeracy so i have this document which is downloadable from the same place you can get the worksheets from which is a term per page planning guide for year two this is a half term here it explains the core ideas of that half term the key progress children need to make it links to some videos that explain that in detail and this document also has links to those worksheets that i've suggested and all the teaching recommended here is low floor high ceiling teaching so wherever i recommend a teaching strategy it is the kind of teaching strategy that will grab all children even if they're really struggling with their maths but if you've got a lot of children who are not yet fluent with the numbers 10, you might want to think about starting with some of the applied topics like measure, maybe length, weight, capacity and so on, or fractions that all the children will be struggling with together and are accessible to children whose small number work is not great and just reordering your teaching so that you're starting with those topics and then as you start to hit the number work very quickly and thoroughly all your children are definitely ready for it in year two you really should be working on the numbers to 20 all year long it's so important to consolidate that work on fluency of calculation within 20 of course you're already doing that now with your starter activities but you do want to do some focused work on the numbers 11 to 20 in particular and on partitioning them and adding to them and subtracting from them all that's explained in that scheme and in the videos that accompany it and then you've got a great deal of work to do on the numbers to 100 as well working with the counting beads and with number squares and then introducing best 10 materials first with bundleable materials and then with your dean's apparatus and just to emphasize that the teaching methods recommended in this scheme are much more time efficient than those you would get from a lesson by lesson pre-planned scheme because these empower you as a teacher to adapt in real time if your children are getting it you will move on very quickly and you'll slow down when you know that they need to spend more time on a particular topic rather than sticking to a pre-written scheme that has to be very very slow at every stage and doesn't use some of the efficiencies of insight which are in this scheme of course if you've got a pre-written scheme and it's good you should definitely use it as and when you feel it's appropriate to do so right let's talk about the kit that you really need to have this year so the first thing you're going to need are counting beads for every child you will also need some apparatus that represents the numbers to 20 as fives and ones. So you can do that with fingers and toes and coat hangers. Some schools do it really effectively with 10 frames. And if you know these strategies are working for you and, and you're confident with them, that's absolutely fine. Some schools are introducing Reckon Rex, which are lovely to use alongside these worksheets for calculations within 20. And you might just fancy them 
for giving your children a fresh start. So if you want Reckon Rex, there's some subsidies available for getting them in England, I believe this year, or you may just want to buy some. I also strongly recommend you get some arrow cards that look like this. A lot of children still get confused about the orders of numbers at this stage, and this bit of apparatus nails that for them. It liberates them to see numbers as clearly as the children who are already reading confidently left to right. Penguins on ice are a great resource. If you watch my video series on teaching year two, you'll see me explaining in detail quite how fabulous they are and how useful they are. Here's a link to that video series now if you just want to glance at it and see if there are any episodes you'd like to look at. I'll also put a link to it at the end of this video and in the description. You will need meter rules for your classroom. Children will want to measure how long the classroom is and get used to thinking about a meter, so you need quite a few. You'll need some standard 3D shapes. If you can possibly get your hands on some magnetic polydron, I just can't recommend it highly enough. It is fabulous if children start to build cubes and pyramids, triangular based pyramids, square based pyramids, pentagonal based pyramids and really explore the link between two dimensional and three dimensional shape. It's fabulous. And of course, you will need to let them build houses and rockets too. And this stuff is just so easy to work with. You'll need some weights for your work on weight. It's really nice to have some kilogram weights around the classroom so children can get a sense of what a kilogram feels like and some one gram weights, which are incredibly light. You'll need to do some work on capacity this year, so you'll need some resources for that. Time is a crucial one this year. It's essential to have geared clocks or watches. Ideally, they would be real clocks or watches. Can you just buy simple clocks for every table so children can watch time move and can turn their hands in a geared way when you're talking about teaching time? And if you can get them all watches, even better. I recommend you make sure you've got a B-Bot or a Roma for your work on direction and position and turning right and so on. As I've already said, I recommend these propeller boards. They come from this company here, Propeller, spelled E double L E R, and they are the rapid recall whiteboards. And one other thing I'd recommend is this lovely pocket money bingo game for when your children are getting used to money. Obviously, this is UK money, so if you're not in the UK, you could get something similar. But it's just such a lovely learning tool. OK, that's everything if you're not in England. So you can switch off now or hop to the end of the video for the key links. Now, for those of you who are in England, you're going to have to deal with SATs this year. And it's not even definite that this will be the last year because the legislation that would make it the last year hasn't gone through Parliament. And a lot of the issues associated with ending Key Stage 1 SATs have not yet been addressed and answers haven't been found for them. So it looks like you are going to have to put your children through these brutal exams. And they are brutal and they are age inappropriate. When we talk on international maths forums about when to introduce column addition and subtraction, the general opinion is that you should start to introduce it age seven or eight. And when I talk about how in England, many children who are just age six have to do these exams where they have column addition and subtraction and they're not even allowed to use apparatus. It's just a huge sense of horror. Of course, it's far more difficult this year with the issues we're facing. Now, the strategies that I've given you will prepare your children pretty much as well as it's possible to prepare them. You just want to add in a couple of papers, practice papers before the SATs tests and give them tons of reassurance that they should just do what they can and not worry about it. But if you can get organised and if the unions can organise a wide scale boycott of these tests, that would be much better so that you can focus on the wonderful learning journey that it should be possible for you and your children to take together this year. So I guess the final bit of reassurance I can give you is that I will be here every Sunday at 9am taking questions live and you are just incredibly welcome to post your questions in the comments to this video or come and ask them live at the live streams on the Rebecca the Maths Lady YouTube channel every Sunday at 9. If you're struggling with extreme issues, I want to know and I want to be able to do my very best to help you if I possibly can. 
There are so many wonderful things about teaching maths at this age and I really do hope you manage to have a great year despite the sats. Take care, bye for now.